ministers are at the Regent's Park Christian School in Western Sydney. They're set to take questions from the audience. Let's listen in. The teachers, the students, they've all made us feel so fantastically welcome. So thank you very much. I haven't met Gary before today, but I can tell that I've made a new best friend because we've got a shared passion for education. So thank you. Can I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and in a spirit of reconciliation, pay my respects to elders past and present. Thank you very much to Auntie Maggie for her welcome to country. And thanks too to the school band. I don't have the world's best singing voice, so when you've got great singers to keep you in tune for the national anthem, that's a very great blessing. So thank you very much, kids, for doing that. What we're going to do now uh, is very shortly turn this meeting over to you because this is your opportunity to ask us questions uh, and to give us feedback and I genuinely want to maximise the time to do that. But before we start that, what I'm going to do is ask my colleagues on the stage to introduce themselves and they're allowed to take one very quick minute to explain what they've been doing today in the local area. So I'll start over there with a man who's uh, probably very well known here too, David Bradbury. Thanks very much, Prime Minister. I'm David Bradbury. I'm the Assistant Treasurer and also the Minister Assisting for Deregulation. I've had the opportunity to meet with a number of local residents this evening uh, to talk about issues uh, as far ranging as small business and the challenges facing small business in the local community here, right across to some of the more complex issues around taxation. It's been a real pleasure and I look forward to this evening. Uh, thank you. I'm, I'm Tanya Plibersek, the Health Minister. Um, I started the day today, PM, um, announcing an extra million dollars for MS research, 23,000 Australians affected by MS, a very um, difficult uh, disease to diagnose, cure and treat. And uh, after that, I'm off to Harris Park to visit an expanding GP surgery there and Bankstown to see breast screening because, of course, in the budget we expanded the target age, age of um, breast screening from 70 to 74 years, so extra women getting screened and extra breast care nurses if they do get a diagnosis of breast cancer. Uh, I'm Anthony Albanese and I'm the Minister for Infrastructure and Transport and today uh, just this afternoon, I've just had a meeting with uh, people from local government about light rail and the potential to have a light rail network here in Western Sydney. Yeah, the Treasurer, I had a meeting earlier with a wise local economic teacher and I learned a lot from him. <laughs> and I'm very confident that the locals around here have been very well educated when it comes to economics. And I also met earlier with uh, some of the young kids here and their, and their mums about juvenile diabetes just briefly, and we're wearing the badge. Steve Conroy, Minister for Broadband Communications and the Digital Economy. Uh, I've been in Sydney the last couple of days. It's National Cyber Security Week. So yesterday I had a string of events where we talked with the industry, we talked with parents, we talked with community leaders about how we can uh, best protect our kids online. Uh, and today, I had a very exciting day, I went to the Powerhouse Museum where I talked with three groups of school kids, all at an NBN connected school, who were remotely operating a replica of the uh, Mars rover uh, up there on Mars. And they had an exhibit where they've got uh, a replica of the Mars surface, and then they moved the rover around Mars. Uh, and that was very exciting, but it's great to be here today because this school is going to be connected to the NBN hopefully in early July and your kids here will then get access to that sort of educational opportunity that the NBN is providing. Good evening. Brendan O'Connor, Minister for Immigration and Citizenship. I've had the good fortune today to be with some of my parliamentary colleagues, John Murphy, Julie Owens, uh, and Jason Clare meeting with community leaders about the way in which the federal government uh, can work with those leaders and, and those communities uh, in improving opportunities for people. And uh, as always, with those types of meetings, I've learned a lot. So thank you very much. Uh, Mike Kelly, uh, Minister for Defence Material, following in the footsteps of your great local member here, Jason Clare. Uh, we have some good defence industry in the area here, about $16 million worth of defence spending through good companies like Hawker Pacific and Turbo Mecca, 
And great companies like Quickstep taking advantage now of our involvement with the Joint Strike Fighter Program with about $588 million worth of work out of that. And we're looking to leverage a great deal more. But also this is a, an area with a proud tradition of service, many sons and daughters serving in the Australian Defence Force, of which I no doubt uh, sense your pride. And tomorrow, uh, with another of the great local members here, Daryl Mellon, I'll be meeting with a group of those veterans to discuss the, the white paper and their interest in that. So thank you for having us. Thanks. Hi, I'm Sharon Bird. I'm the Minister for Higher Education and Skills. And I've been doing some work with some of the local members as well, Chris Hayes and Daryl Mellon, about a project running across a number of TAFE to uh, work with employers to provide language and literacy skills for apprentices and uh, across Miller, Granville, Lincoln and Chalora. But also I want to uh, make the point and acknowledge that building on the great work the Prime Minister started in this portfolio of increasing the number of people from low SES background who are participating in the great university out here. It's about 17.4% increase since 2009. It's a great achievement of the university's part and we are hitting record numbers of first in family going to universities again. You know that um, they're in your community and when we have the great pleasure and I had the chance to be at the University of Western Sydney not so long ago, uh, you meet them and it's a tremendous thing to see. And uh, the young people here I was chatting to today and the people from the, um, the youth centre, uh, it is really important we build on the great work the school's doing by providing pathways and opportunities for young people as well. Thanks, Sharon. And I've got two more friends with me who aren't on stage, but I'd ask them to stand up now so you can acknowledge them. So Chris Hayes, the member for Fowler, and Daryl Mellum, the member for Banks, are here with us as well. So it's over to you, but if I can make a few uh, opening remarks. Uh, as a government, what we're focused on is growing our economy, keeping it strong as well as building a future for our nation to share. Uh, we've done some things in this nation which we should be very proud of because we've done them together. During the most difficult of global economic circumstances, during the global financial crisis, we all work together, government, business, unions, employees, we all work together to bring our nation through stronger than other nations around the world, and we've achieved that. We kept 200,000 people working and we also supported families with their cost of living pressures. That's a big thing to have done and something that wasn't possible in the United States or in so many of the countries of Europe. So we've come out of the global financial crisis with an economy that around the world people look at and recognise is a very resilient economy. But with all of the resilience in our economy, you can never take anything for granted. The future's not assured. And even with all that resilience in our economy, for many families, this has been a time of pressure and it's not easy to make ends meet. And we understand that. So we want to keep working with families to meet cost of living pressures, childcare, getting the kids to school, uh, making sure that aged mum and dad, maybe grandmum, granddad, have got an aged care pension with a bit more money in it uh, to make sure we're doing those things. And we're focused in today's economic times on jobs and growth. Our economy, though strong overall, has got some sites of pressure because of our very strong Australian dollar. And so we are rolling out a billion dollar plan for Australian jobs because we want to keep growing opportunities for all of us to share. And as we do that, we want to invest in the things that will make us stronger and fairer for the future. A stronger economy, one that's using the national broadband network, because we can't afford to get caught with yesterday's technology when nations around the world with which we compete have technology like the NBN. A clean energy future, because once again, we can't afford to be left behind as other nations around the world move to more renewable energy sources. The investments in apprenticeships and into universities, because we know the jobs of the future are going to be high skill, high wage jobs. And so unless we're investing in the skills and capacity of our people, we won't be getting those jobs. And at the same time, making sure we're doing better for school education. I have the opportunity to visit a lot of schools. I visited one today and read to the kids. It was uh, great fun to do that, really enjoyed it. But when you look at those kids, when you come to a school 